scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Just like you do not know the way of the wind, nor how bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child, so you do not know the ways of God. He's mighty enough to use anything to bless you. He's mighty enough to use any strategy to bless you. May that be so for you. Listen, please hear me. Let your faith be alive. Don't come wondering, will God touch me? Don't come wondering, will God heal me? God is not a herbalist. God is not a magician. He is God all by himself. He was not created. He was not supported. Are we together? So let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy life. I'll sing it one more time. Let hope rise. Let hope rise. Darkness, Darkness trembles in your holy Hallelujah. The first point I want you to know tonight as we prepare to see the God of wonders is that God's love is unconditional. But walking in the reality of his promises is highly conditional. Number one, God's love for you, God's love for me is unconditional. But walking in the reality of his promises is highly conditional. Very simple point but very powerful. God does not need you to become. God does not need you to believe. God does not even need you to love him to love you. It is his nature. He says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. And with my loving kindness, I have drawn you. God is love. The Bible does not say he has love. The Bible does not just say he shows love. He is love. However, Walking in the reality of his promises is highly conditional because there are many believers who confuse the love character of God to mean that just because he is love, he should be too loving to leave me in this situation. He should be too loving to not step in over my life. Now you are learning that his love is unconditional. Nothing must be done on your own part to secure his love for you. But when it has to do with walking in the reality of his promises, there are conditions. Number two, the second point tonight, no amount of prayers, no amount of confession, no amount of spiritual activities 
not even impartation will ever substitute or replace the need for obedience point number two no amount of prayers no amount of confession no amount of spiritual activities and even impartation will ever substitute or replace the need for obedience that means you cannot substitute obedience with prayers you cannot substitute obedience with confession you cannot substitute obedience with spiritual activities you cannot substitute obedience even with impartation obedience is that powerful and is that much of a requirement as far as you're actualizing God's promises is concerned there are many believers who perpetually walk in disobedience to the principles of scripture but they pray while in disobedience they confess while in disobedience they carry out spiritual activities while in disobedience they even receive impartation while in disobedience none of these spiritual activities as profitable as they are will ever replace the place of obedience is someone learning this is very powerful so while you pray while you confess scripture while you engage in spiritual activities while you submit yourself to receive impartation you must be sure that your heart is determined to obtain grace from God to walk in complete obedience he says having the readiness to judge all disobedience if and when your obedience is entire or complete don't forget what we are discussing a quick recap point number one that God's love for you is unconditional but walking in the reality of his promises is highly conditional point number two that no amount of prayers no amount of confession no amount of spiritual activities no amount of impartation will ever substitute or replace the need for obedience point number three God's power God's power will usually demand faith on the part of the receiver before it is revealed God's power will usually demand faith on the part of the receiver before it is revealed this is very important God's power will usually I will not write the word always and there is a reason for that because a dead man for instance does not operate by his personal faith to come back to life but God's power will usually demand faith on the part of the receiver before it is revealed Matthew 14 and verse 28 Peter was standing in the boat and looking at Jesus and he answered him and said Lord if it be thou bid me come unto thee on the water and verse 29 the Bible says he said to him come and when Peter was come out of the ship he walked on water to go to Jesus the possibilities that you command is based on your attentiveness and your faith in Jesus he walked to Jesus if it be thou bid me come and he said come in John chapter 2 and verse 5 the wedding in Cana John chapter 2 and verse 5 the wine finished and Mary the mother of Jesus said unto the servants whatsoever he saith unto you do it not argue it not explain it not complain about it he said whatsoever he just verify that he's the one saying it and do it your miracle is connected to his voice his instructions and your obedience is someone learning in Acts chapter 3 and verse 16 when the man at get beautiful was healed and they were making defense of the miracle before the council he said and his name through faith 
in his name had made this man strong whom ye see and know he said yeah the faith which is by him had given this man perfect soundness in the presence of you all faith in his name you can have faith in your problem it does not heal it does not change anything you can have faith in the devil absolutely it does not bring you any solution faith must be in the name of Jesus the resurrected Christ is someone learning in Hebrews chapter 4 Apostle Paul was teaching us something very powerful let's begin from verse 1 Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 1 still talking about faith and obedience it says let us therefore fear listen carefully lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest any of you should seem to come short of it let's read verse 2 together ready one to read verse 2 for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them but the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it so hearing it is not all there is to faith add it but it was not mixed with faith many believers do not understand that God's power can be available in a place in fact God himself can be in a place and yet nothing happens the Lord opened my eyes to a scripture recently the Bible talks about the Word of God that all things were made by him is that true John 1 3 and that without him was not anything made listen carefully that was made all things were made by him I think it's Colossians 1 16 that talks about you know all things even by him were all things created that were in heaven and that on earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones dominions principalities powers they were created by him and for him and we know that the word of God does not fail the Bible says heaven and earth will pass away but that the word of God endures forever yet when that word became a man and walked upon the earth there were certain things he could not do even though the Bible says the Word of God should not fail yet when the word was personified in a man he failed many times he went to a certain city and could not get certain things done so what was wrong that word that created everything without failure now was embodied in a man and he went to certain places and certain miracles could not happen and scripture had to give us that explanation he said he marveled at their unbelief not he marveled at the limitation of his power he marveled at their unbelief that means as powerful as the word is your unbelief can render it null and void the power of God will usually demand faith on the part of the receiver and I've taught you here the dynamics of faith is twofold you must have faith in Jesus and you must have faith in the vessel that he's using if you have faith in Jesus alone you will still not receive are we together when Peter and John saw the man at gate beautiful they didn't tell him look on Jesus they said, look on us we are the, the it is going to come from Jesus but now that the power is already on earth he's done his own part look on us you want to be healed pay attention to us and listen to what we're telling you he says such as I have I have because I was given but I have it are, are you listening to this now so when it has to do with acknowledging the sovereignty of Christ we worship him and honor him alone but when it has to be do with the dynamics of the transmission of his power from the throne to the final recipient it is not only God you need you need God and a yielded vessel so you need faith in Jesus and you need faith in the vessel that you will use 
it says believe in the Lord your God so shall you be established then it says to believe in his prophets so shall you prosper point number four this is where I want to dwell a bit and then we'll pray please lend me your attention the fourth point rest round about is God's desire for every believer in Christ write it don't put a full stop rest round about is God's desire for every believer in Christ rest round about is God's desire for every believer in Christ therefore you must contend for rest in every area of your life rest round about is God's desire for every believer in Christ therefore you must contend for rest in every area of your life you know what that means you must be willing to take personal responsibility and insist until there is rest roundabout. This is why we came. So please listen very carefully. I've said four things. That number one, the love of God towards you is unconditional. But that walking in the reality of his promises is highly conditional. Did we get that? Number two. That no spiritual activity sustains the power to replace obedience. Number three, that the power of God is available, but it will usually require faith on the part of the recipient to be made manifest. And then number four, that rest round about is God's desire. So we are not in confusion as to God's will and desire when it comes to our wholesome rest rest round about is God's desire for every believer in Christ therefore you must contend for rest in every area of your life a few scriptures Exodus 33 and verse 14 these scriptures prove that it is God's desire to give us rest it says my presence shall go with you speaking to Moses and I will give you more than favor I will give you more than progress I will give you more than wisdom I will give you more than victory it says I will give you rest are we together in physics when you define rest scientifically it means two things number one that there is no opposing force that is greater than the weight of that body pushing it to go to the left or right you say that body is in a state of rest am I right or that the force that is being applied is equal to the force that is opposing and so the body is in a state of rest that is truly the definition of rest in order to attain rest it means something has to be done to all the forces that sustain the power to push you like a pendulum to the left and to the right it says my presence will go with you as a defense and I will give you rest say amen, amen. in Isaiah chapter 14 we'll read from verse 3 down to 7 please pay attention Isaiah 14 3 to 7 and it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve notice the things that God wants to give you rest please go back to verse 3 he says rest from your sorrow rest from your fear and from hard bondage verse 4 it says that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say how had the oppressor seized and the golden city seized reading to seven it says the Lord had broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers verse 6 he who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth 
that means it's his own turn to receive a recompense and then he says the whole earth is at rest and is quiet they break forth into singing may God give you rest in the name of Jesus Christ may God give you rest in first Kings chapter 8 first Kings chapter 8 we'll read from 54 first Kings 8 from verse 54 the Bible says and it was so that when Solomon had made an end of the praying of praying all his prayer and supplication unto the Lord that he arose from before the altar of the Lord and kneeling on his knees with his hands spread up to heaven next verse he says he stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice saying uh-huh blessed be the Lord that had given rest unto his people Israel according to all that he promised there had not failed one word of his good promise which he had promised by the hand of Moses his servant we're reading to 56 is that 56 here so we'll, we'll just stop there everybody say rest Amen. let me give you one more scripture I wrote down here Matthew 11 and verse 28 Jesus himself is speaking now 11 28 Matthew come unto me someone needs to answer this call today come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest is the name given to every condition that ensures you are free of any opposing force rest it is the responsibility now please listen especially for men and women of God who may be following it is the responsibility of every shepherd to walk with the Spirit of God in bringing God's people into their rest in experience it is the responsibility of every shepherd to walk with the Spirit of God in bringing God's people into their rest in experience please give us Ezekiel 34 while studying and preparing for this miracle service I read this scripture and a new light came as though I had never read it before 34 from verse 1 please be patient as I read you can feel free to say amen but just be patient in fact say it in your heart if not you will you will disturb me but you need to listen to this very properly and the word of the Lord came to me saying go ahead son of man prophesy against the shepherds in Israel prophesy and say unto them thus saith the Lord God or unto the shepherds woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves and not the shepherds and not the should not the shepherds feed the flocks is a question verse 2 ye eat the fat and ye clothe you with the wool ye kill them that are fed but ye feed not the flock the diseased have ye not strengthened neither have ye healed that which was sick neither have ye bound up that which was broken neither have ye brought again that which was driven away no restoration neither have ye sought that which was lost but with force and with cruelty you have ruled them next verse he says and they were scattered because there was there is no shepherd and they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered next verse my sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill yea my flock was scattered upon the face of the earth and none did search or seek after them therefore ye shepherds hear the word of the lord verse 8 say long reading be patient as i live saith the lord surely because my flock became a prey and my flock became meat to every beast of the field because there was no shepherd neither did my shepherd search for my flock but the shepherds fed themselves and not my flock therefore O ye shepherds hear the word of the Lord 
thus saith the Lord God, behold, I am against the shepherds. Can you see that it's possible for God to be against a man of God? Literally. And I will require my flock at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. Next verse. When I read this verse, I prayed for myself seriously. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. Twelve. As the shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so I will seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. Be patient, we are going somewhere. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries. And I will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in a good pasture and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. He says, there shall they lie in a good fold and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. Next verse. That is how God is determined to give his sheep rest. I will feed my flock, he says, and I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord. Uh-huh. I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away. I will bind up that which was broken and strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. And as for you, O my flock, thus saith the Lord, behold, I will judge between cattle and cattle and between rams and the he goats. Next verse. He said, Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture, but ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures. He says, And to have drunk of the deep waters, but ye must. Ye must foul the residue with your feet. Next verse. It says, as for my flock, hallelujah, that which ye have trodden with your feet, and they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet. Look at, look at what he's saying. Therefore thus saith, that's verse, go to verse 20. Therefore thus saith the Lord, God unto them, behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat cattle and the lean cattle. Therefore, because ye have trust with side and with shoulder and push all the diseased with your horns till ye have scattered them abroad. He's describing for you the state of the sheep that has made him to say, shepherd or no shepherd, I am coming to make sure I rescue my sheep. Be patient, we're almost there. Therefore, I will save my flock and they shall no more be a prey. I will judge between cattle and cattle. 23. And I will set up one shepherd over them and he shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed them and he shall be their shepherd. 24. And I the Lord will be their God and my servant David a prince among them. I the Lord have spoken. We're reading to 30. I think 30 or 31 is the last verse. And I will make with them a covenant of peace and will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land. And they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods 26 and i will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing and i will cause the shower to come down in a season and there shall be showers of blessings next verse and the tree of the field shall yield her fruit and the earth shall yield her increase and they shall be safe in their land and ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have broken the bands of their yoke and delivered them out of the hands of those that serve themselves of them. 28. 
and they shall no more be a prey to the heathen neither shall the beasts of the land devour them but they shall dwell safely and none shall make them afraid 29 and i will raise up for them a plant of renown and they shall be no more consumed with hunger in the land neither bear the shame of the heathen anymore verse 30 listen to this read verse 30 together are you ready one to go thus shall they be known that i the lord their god am with them and that they even the house of israel are my people saith the lord that by doing all of these things i will prove to you that you are my people i will prove to you that I have brought you into a state of rest, defeating your enemies, making the rain to come, and so on and so forth. Very, very, very powerful scripture. The last verse and then we're done, 31. It says, and ye my flock, and the flock of my pastures, amen. So he's not talking about animals in the wilderness. He's saying all this flock I've been talking about, you are men, and I am your God, saith the Lord God. Tonight, everything that must happen according to this scripture to give you rest, you will find it in the name of Jesus. Now, please listen very carefully. I wrote here, why do we keep releasing our faith to contend for all-round rest? Why do we keep organizing miracle services after miracle services? Three scriptures. Number one, Micah 2.10. Micah chapter 2 and verse 10. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted and shall destroy you, even with a sore destruction. The first reason why we keep contending is because where we are is not yet our rest. He said, arise ye and depart, for where you are financially, spiritually, is not your rest. That means we will keep organizing as many miracle services, as many, mini, as many ministrations, as many teaching sessions until you get to your rest. He said, arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Hebrews chapter 4 from verse 9. Hebrews 4 and 9. 4 and 9. Therefore, it says, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Verse 10. For he that is entered into his rest, he hath also ceased from his own works, as God did from his. The charge is in verse 11. He says, let us labor therefore. Let us what? Not let us assume. Not let us fold our hands and wait for rest to come and meet us. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Let us labor therefore. And the Bible gives us the various ways that the believer labors. It says, honor the elders who labor in word and in doctrine. So we labor in word, the ministry of the word. Remember? Acts chapter 2 from verse 42. The Bible says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship, number two, and in breaking of bread, number three, and in prayers. This is how we labor. And then Acts chapter 6 and verse 4, it says, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. This is how we labor to enter our rest. In Isaiah chapter 62, Isaiah chapter 62, from verse 6 to 10, 62 from verse 6, or we'll just do 6 to 8. It says, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence, it says, 7, and give him no rest till he establish verse 2 Jesus himself is giving a parable and he spoke about this woman who had no physical support system that in a city there was a judge with 
did not fear God nor regard man. Verse 3. It says there was in that same city a widow and she came to him and said, Avenge me mine adversary. For, But for a while he would not. Afterwards he told himself, he said, Though I fear not God nor regard man. Verse 5. That's the key. He said, Yet because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her less by her continual coming some versions will say her importunity she weary me six verse six it says and hear what the lord says to the, about the unjust judge seven it says and shall not god avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him though he be along with them. I'm showing you scriptures that justify your persistently pushing. That is your labor dimension. So that you don't say, I came for miracle service in January. I dropped my request. I've not seen it happen. Write it again. It is not unbelief. That is the labor dimension of faith. The Bible says, give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem as a praise. Are we together? The widow was defenseless and she went to the judge and she said, avenge me my adversary. I'm sure he would say, okay, that's all right. Um, come back again. And she kept coming and the man said, although I do not fear God and I did not regard man. He said, however, this woman by her continuous coming, it is Jesus himself giving this. So let me tell you, you will pray today over what you prayed for before that has not yet happened. It is not unbelief. It is a labor dimension. You are coming because you trust him. Father, thank you. You gave me a word that my children, I will eat from my children in my lifetime. It has not yet happened, but I thank you because I'm in an atmosphere where it can happen. Therefore, I have come again. There is no responsible parent who should be tired of seeing their child. No. God wants to give us rest tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. God wants to give us rest. That means you have a responsibility to search the areas of your life where you have not yet seen rest in experience we're going to pray two kinds of prayer before i begin to minister number one will be a prayer of thanksgiving to say lord thank you for giving me rest in this area now you know the definition of rest you have taken away all the forces that that disturb me in this area thank you for giving me marital rest thank you for giving me financial rest you see but Lord, I thank you because you are faithful to save to the uttermost. And that in, in administering your rest, you do it round about. So while thanking you for this one, I bring before you this one. Are we together now? Yes, sir. When you thank him for what he has done, you make petitions with faith. The Bible says in Mark chapter 11 and verse 44, it says, what things soever ye desire. Mark 11 and um, 24 not 4 mark 11 24 what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that ye receive them what things soever ye desire the bible talked about naaman the captain of the syrian army when it had to do with war and the matters of war he had found rest he was a valiant man but the bible says he was leprous and now the time had come to do something about that leprosy. And do you know how he tackled the issue of leprosy? Through the aid of the little slave girl, he isolated every other area and just, he just focused on that issue of leprosy until he was done with it. Thank God for the testimonies you've shared. Thank God for the manifest presence of God and results that you have seen in other areas. But for tonight, we are thanking him for what he's done. But then we are placing a demand by faith on his power to say, Lord, you can finish what you have started. Is someone in agreement with me? Yeah. Father, you gave me land and I've built to Lintel level. Thank you for grace. But you are not only Alpha. You finish what you've started. But that is not your best. Your best is you are a God of portions. 
you desire to give me my own space reho boat where i can say god has created my own space so while i thank you for the rent i am here tonight now that you have given me another opportunity the only person who should be silent when we begin to pray is the person who is dead but for as long as you are alive my bible says the path of the just is as a shining light even in heaven you can come up hither you may be a man of god here god has trusted you with tremendous levels of grace you can thank him for that level of anointing thank him for that level of wisdom but say lord i have come again fresh fire fresh grace hallelujah lord i thank you that even with the bracelet i can still lift up my my the, the neck uh, you know whatever it is or whatever around my waist i can still give you thanks but lord i know i can do without it father thank you because i'm hearing on one ear i thank you for the privilege to even have one walking but lord you can make both whole and so i place a demand are we together and don't let the devil deceive you and say people are talking to god about serious issues and you are bringing this one is god complaining what things soever ye desire when ye pray and my bible says this is the confidence that we have that when we ask anything according to his will that he heareth us he heareth us he's not an idol hallelujah my job prophetically tonight is as a midwife to help and guide you while you deliver because that baby must come out in the name of jesus christ that baby must come out there is a natural process of delivery for a woman and that is usually the best but if for any reason there is an unusual delay doctors have another alternative to force that baby to come out but coming out he must come out are we together holy holy blessed is he who comes in the name of our god holy holy blessed is he who comes in the name of our god hosanna hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of our god hosanna hosanna blessed is Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he. Listen to me, I am a firm believer in Jesus Christ and I am a firm believer in the miraculous. I truly believe in miracles because my life is one. Not just that I've seen one, he has made me one. I believe in miracles. What is a miracle? An occurrence that does not go through the normal sequence of the laws of life you see sponsored by the hand of god an act of his mercy an act of his might an act of his love this is a miracle service it's not called a suggestion service it's not called a counseling service and whatsoever name adam called it that was the name thereof please rise up on your feet hello Madonna. Madonna. 
prayer point number one is the prayer of thanksgiving i like you to look at the areas where you have tasted a level of rest and say thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus somebody is praying lord you have helped me ebenezer thus far you have shown me mercy in this area thank you someone is praying someone is praying someone is praying you look past my sin my guilt my shame and poured your love you look beyond me oh you look beyond me oh you look past my sin my guilt my shame and poured your love are you praying you look beyond me oh you look beyond me oh the one you have shown mercy you have shown me mercy you have shown me mercy say i am the one i'm the one you have shown mercy you have shown me 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 mercy one more time say i'm the one you have shown mercy Someone is praying, Father, thank you. Shalega Bakatoska Brendege Balagosiata. Someone is praying, Lord, you have shown me mercy. Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin 